All right, so you have a matrix, right? And you want to iterate over certain parts of that matrix, right? You want to go over the diagonal, the other diagonal, you want to go over the, on the north side of it or above the primary diagonal and so on. How can you find an algorithm for any of these? Well, let's first start simple, right? Let's start with i and n equals 5. n is just the size of it, of the array. And we want to just go over the diagonal of that matrix. Well, it's simple, right? You, you might know this algorithm. You just go 4i equals 0i less than n, i plus plus. And then here you say, all right, print f percent d. Let me give you a space here. And matrix i of i. Okay, and if I try to run this, you will notice that in, indeed we do get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that's 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Cool. Well, this works, but why does this work? Why does this work? Well, it has everything to do with the relationship between the column index and the line index. You will notice that in the primary diagonal, every single element has... Uh, the column index equal to the line index, right? Here 0 is 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2, right? So you can actually iterate over the array using two for loops. All right, so let me just add another, another 4 inside of here. So 4, j equals 0, j less than n, j plus plus. And you can, instead of doing this, you can also, it, it's less efficient, of course, but you can just do, you can just do i equals equals to j and just use matrix i and j. And if I try to run this, you will notice that I get the exact same result. Cool. So that's how you can come up with this algorithm. Well, how about the, the secondary diagonal? How can you go about it? Well, there's a pattern here, you, you might notice. Here, for example, the column index and the line index adds up to 4. Here also adds up to 4. Here also adds up to 4. So, what you can do is just check if, uh, if added, they add up to 4. So, if i plus j equals equals 4. Well, this 4, where does this come for, from? Well, for this corner, it's actually the last index in the matrix. This means that if the matrix were, for example, of size 8, this index would have been 7, right? So it's the size minus 1, okay? So you can do n minus 1. And if I try to run this, you will notice that we have indeed iterated over the secondary diagonal. 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. Cool. We got this. Now, how can we go over the elements above and below these diagonals? Well, let's let's come back to this i equals j. Right, we have we had i equals j, and this did print out the elements in the diagonal. Well, since if i equals j prints the element on the diagonal, what happens if I do an uh, an inequality here? What if I say, all right, print everything that's that has the line index less than the column index. What's gonna what's gonna happen here? Well, let's first execute. Yeah, this doesn't look good. So let let's just add a uh, print f in here. That says backslash n, because otherwise it won't look great. And what do you know? We have iterated over the part below, or no, the part above the primary diagonal, right? We got one for ones, we got three twos, we got two threes, and we got a five here. Okay, it's just a little bit flipped. You might need to uh, format that better. But why is that? Why does that work? Well, if we look at it, here, the line index is equal to the column index. But here, the line index is less than the column index. And here, the line index is less than the column index. What about here, for example? Well, the line index is higher than the column index, so that, that's not going to be printed out. 
and you can check for every single element in this matrix and you will notice that only the elements above the primary diagonal are um, interpreting this condition to be true. Okay, this means that if I do i higher than j, it will print out everything below the primary diagonal. That's amazing, right? So we get 2, 3, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, 2, 3, 3, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3, 4. Amazing. Okay, that's simple enough, but how about, how about uh, if we want to iterate over everything that's above the primary and the secondary diagonal. What does that even mean? Well, the primary diagonal is this one, right? And the secondary diagonal is this one. So everything above those, those two is here, right? So I want to iterate over these elements. What's the relationship between uh, the line index and the column index in this instance? Well, we first have to take note that i, the line index, only goes up to here. And what's, so this is the uh, line with index 0 and the line with index 1. We, we don't care about what's in here, right? So what's, what's this number? Well, this number is actually, uh, it goes up to n over 2, right? It just goes over the, over half of the matrix. So we can just uh, say in our for loop that you only have to iterate up till half of n, right? We don't care what's below the two diagonals. Okay. What next? Well, we know that i goes up to n over 2, but how about j? How does that go? How does that look? Well, on the first line, j skips over the first element prints everything ex and except the last element. So basically it, um, it prints everything in the line in the middle, but with one element missing. And then on the second line, it prints everything in the middle, but instead of one, this time is two elements. And if this matrix would have been bigger, it would be everything in between. And then uh, the first three would be skipped and the last three would be skipped. So how can we model a, an algorithm that iterates over this? It's actually pretty simple. We just have to put here a condition that says J, J here has to be So j here has to be higher than i, but not just i, right? So it has to be higher than i. If it's higher than i, that means that I'm going to print everything above this diagonal, right? And j also has to be less than, well, the size of the matrix minus one so that's going to be the last index also minus i we want to take out one element and because it's exclusive this should print out only the elements in the north side so if i try to run this you will notice that we get three ones and one two i will leave you a little bit of homework to figure out an algorithm by yourself that iterates over the south side of the matrix, which is this one, and every other side. Or you might want to pick any other side of the matrix just to get the gist of it. That's how you can build an algorithm on the spot. So I hope you learned something and I hope you understood how to build these algorithms. You don't have to uh, remember these algorithms. You just have to remember the way to make these algorithms on the spot. All right. Thanks for watching and I hope you understood something.